Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I submit that whenever you have an issue under debate, the surest sign of weakness in an argument is to avoid the question, to talk about anything but the question in issue. Now, I, I do compliment the gentlelady from Texas for her point just made. She focused on the issue, uh, but I, I do uh, eagerly undertake her challenge. She says, you cannot make an argument that Hunter Biden is in contempt. How can you argue he will not come? She said, when he said he would come. Well, here's how. He was issued a subpoena for a deposition. He stated publicly and in correspondence that he would not testify in a deposition, that he wanted to do it his way in an open hearing. Well, that's contempt. And it is open and shut, cut and dried, as simple as it can possibly be. So the, the subject under debate is whether an ordinary citizen who defies a subpoena of a congressional impeachment inquiry should be held to account. And there is also no need, really, to debate that. <laughs> Quite to the contrary from the, the point, the suggestion of the gentlelady from California, the weight is all on the other side. And interestingly enough, in the matters of Bannon and Navarro, every member of the minority is on record to that effect. Indeed, members of the minority have gone farther than that. Mr. Raskin has specifically addressed the purported basis for objection that Hunter Biden has offered, stating that the proper course is to first have private testimony in a deposition to explore facts thoroughly and in the, in, in the way that that mode of examination permits, and then to have a public hearing after. Nobody that I can recall in the minority took issue with that point. But here's really the salient and final aspect that makes this clear beyond argument. This may be the most brazenly recalcitrant witness defying Congress in the history of the, of the Congress that I'm aware of. Now, there may be some other situation in which this has been done. But the, mem but the person who was subject to the subpoena, I hear the laughter on the other side, so let me go further. I don't know that anyone has ever come onto the complex in the shadow of the United States Capitol building suborned and assisted by another member of Congress, a member of this committee, stood in the triangle and vowed to the media that he was defying the subpoena of a congressional impeachment inquiry. I don't know that that's ever been done. And I certainly don't believe that it's ever been the case that a member of Congress has made arrangements for that brazen defiance of Congress to be expressed on the Capitol, in the Capitol complex, on the plaza. So if you want to talk about the issue, it is not a close call. If you want to talk about what happened in the previous Congress and whether Congress can subpoena members of Congress to testify before a committee, especially when that committee has falsified and fabricated evidence, to its eternal shame, then you can talk about those other issues. And I would if I were you, because you certainly cannot meet the simple proposition that is before us now. Would, would the, would and the you gentleman certainly yield? cannot deny the duty of this committee to respond to that brazen defiance. Would, would the gentleman yield? I will. And I, I promise I'll yield back to you down the road. But the point I would just make here is that the difference between Hunter Biden and, as you, you mentioned, uh, Navarro and Bannon, is that Navarro and Bannon totally stonewalled Congress. They didn't produce any documents. They didn't offer to testify in any way. And they didn't provide any testimony of any kind. By contrast I here. Let me take my time back, because I've only got another 20 seconds. And I don't want to just leave, and, and, and we'll come back to it and have further, further colloquy, if you like. And I appreciate the gentleman from Maryland's uh, collegial interaction. I think that is a distinction without a difference. I don't think, in fact, I think it makes it worse that Hunter Biden goes to media and, and declares and decides how he will 
testify to Congress. He will come to a public meeting, but he will not do what Congress has commanded by a lawful subpoena. I don't think it's a distinction that favors him. I think it's one that requires us to act. And my time's expired. Gentleman yields back who seeks recognition. The gentleman from Washington is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I appreciate the passion from my friend across the aisle and the outrage. I think we're all outraged about many things. But if we're going to talk about outrageous things that have happened or things that have never happened, let's talk about the fact that President Trump incited an erection. Uh, and, and <laughs> maybe that, too. <laughs> yeah, you could talk about that, too, I guess. Maybe we should talk about that, too. The president incited an insurrection. Maybe we should talk about the fact that the president, the former president, was made. impeached twice. Maybe we should talk about the fact that the former president was convicted on 91 felony counts. Maybe we should talk about the fact that the former president was charged with interfering with our elections. Maybe we should talk about the fact that most, if not all, of the members of this committee, certainly leaders in the House, have continued to support and endorse a person who has literally talked about being a dictator from day one. So, Mr. Chairman, I believe this markup is an unbelievable waste of time. My Republican colleagues have been investigating Hunter Biden for years. My colleague, Mr. Ivey, just gave very important uh, statements about why this is a different case than others that have been cited. There's been no indication whatsoever that any of his activities are connected to the president. They have turned up nothing. So why are we really here today? It is another distraction from the fact that in the words of one of my colleagues on the other side, in this committee, by the way, um, said on the floor of the House, this Republican-controlled do-nothing Congress has not delivered one thing that Republicans can go home and say that they delivered to their constituents. In fact, this Congress is on track to be one of the most unproductive in modern history. This Republican-led House has only passed 27 bills, 27 bills that became law in spite of holding 724 votes. We still have no reauthorization of the Farm Bill, no bringing to the floor of a bipartisan bill that we passed in this committee around surveillance reform. We are on the verge of a government shutdown. And you just compare that to 2022, when Democrats controlled the House with a razor thin majority. We held 549 votes and 248 bills were signed into law. Now, none of this inaction stops my Republican colleagues from celebrating all the funding for infrastructure and jobs that Democrats passed without a single Republican vote. Not a single Republican voted for the Inflation Reduction Act, and yet there are many that go home to their constituents and keep crowing about how they're bringing money home from bills that they never voted for. But aside from claiming the work of Democrats, Republicans have no achievements to run on. And the American people should make no mistake that this hearing is pure political distraction. My colleagues would have you forget that under the Biden administration, 2.7 million jobs were created just last year, more than any year under the previous administration. That is a total of 14.3 million jobs created under President Joe Biden. My colleagues would have you forget that starting this month, more Americans with diabetes will finally, finally see sharp decreases in insulin prices. Thanks to President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act, people on Medicare now pay no more than $35 a month for insulin prescriptions. That is money in people's pockets at home. And these efforts put pressure on drug makers to lower their prices for people not on Medicare as well. House Democrats also passed and President Biden signed into law making historic investments to lower prescription drug prices. We extended health care coverage to millions, health care that Republicans are just trying to take away, acted on climate change, spurred American chips manufacturing, all while creating millions of jobs, and finally, finally starting to ensure that the wealthy pay their fair share in taxes. And that's not to mention that we as House Democrats used our gavels to pass the Women's Health Protection Act to protect the right to decide whether or not 
to have an abortion. We passed landmark legislation to protect voting rights, to protect the civil rights of LGBTQ Americans, common sense gun safety reforms, legislation to provide a roadmap to citizenship to dreamers and farm workers, bills that provided an increase to the federal minimum wage and protecting the right to collective bargaining, all with the slim margins that Republicans now blame for gridlock. What we did the last two Congresses is what real leadership looks like. We didn't waste months of staff time and taxpayer resources chasing empty investigations to score cheap political points. Reject this bad faith resolution, and let's focus on things that actually deliver for the American people. I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. Uh, the gentleman from New Jersey.